time to sketch. Nope, this is sketching. Hi everyone, and welcome to day 15 of the Sketchbook Slam Challenge. Woo, woo! That means I am halfway done with the challenge, or that's what I would say if I was halfway done with the challenge. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that I am three days behind, but I'll talk about that later. Before I get started on our topic for today, I did want to mention that my store is open again. I closed it for about a month when I went away for the holidays, but it's open, woo! Okay, let's talk about today's topic, which I'm sure you already know because of the title, Factors That Affect Your Art. Now, this might not be the most exciting topic, but it's something that you probably haven't really thought about. But there's a lot of things that go into your art and makes it the way that it is. So the first thing is probably the smallest one, but it's your medium. I noticed that when I switched from digital art to traditional art, my art kind of went through a major change. Now, I used Illustrator because I really enjoyed the way digital art was able to, I guess, achieve this very smooth and clean look. I really liked vectors. I liked how clean they were. I loved how you could manipulate every single little angle and just every little detail was in your control. So I would spend way more time changing this little detail and that little detail and making sure that everything was perfect. I think this made my art pretty stiff and it made me create things much slower than I needed to. So when I switched to traditional art and I was able to put things down and what was down was down and I had to move on, I noticed that I made art a lot faster and I also noticed that my art was a lot, I wouldn't say it's way less stiffer than it was, but it's definitely a lot flowier and it's definitely got more, more less stiffness. I don't know how to explain that. But that's just me personally, again, because I worked in Vector and I had too much control. For some reason, I never got into digital painting and when I used Photoshop, I just wasn't super into that. I don't know. I think it's also just a little bit less stressful with digital because you have the ability to erase things and have different layers, whereas traditional, you could spill your glass of water on it. And although I do want to say with digital art, you might take more chances and experiment a little bit more, to be honest, I find myself trying more things and taking more chances with traditional art. I don't know why that is. Maybe I just feel like I can do more with traditional art because maybe because I have everything at my fingertips and I don't have to look at a program and try to learn how to use things. I can just look up how to use a material and experiment with it. And I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Let's move on to the next one, which is weather. This is probably the most well-known or noticed one. When the weather starts to cool down, you don't draw your character in a swimsuit. You probably put a sweater on your character. And when it is scolding hot outside, it's 100 degrees, do you draw your character in a sweater? Nope, you're going to put them in shorts and a t-shirt. At least, probably most of the time. I'm not saying it's impossible to draw your character in winter clothes during the summer, but for the most part, when things start to cool down, you probably notice yourself put your character in clothes that are warmer. You probably also start drawing your character in the snow, building snowmen. And in the summer, it's a beach episode, right? And once it's winter, you start to get that, what is it, seasonal winter depression. And once you're sad, this moves to our third one, which is your mood. I think your mood is one of the biggest factors with your art. You probably draw yourself a lot, it makes sense. So when you're sad, you might draw yourself sad. If you're angry, you might draw yourself angry. This makes a lot of sense because drawing and art in general is an expression of yourself. So it makes sense that you're using your art like a journal. I didn't really know that this was a thing, vent art, until somewhat recently. Of course, when I was a little bit younger, if I was really angry or really sad, I would draw myself as such. But I didn't know that kids would draw such intense art that I've been seeing recently. And I think it's a really good way to, I guess, let these emotions out and let your stress out and just take it out on art instead of, I guess, yourself. So vent art is a really good way to do that, though I think that's a whole other topic, so I'm not going to get into that. Though that does lead me into the fourth and final factor that affects your art, which is life experiences. Now, this might be too deep for me, but I'm going to try to just touch on it really quick. So depending on your life and what you have gone through, it really changes what you draw. Maybe you have a lot of stories to tell, so you get into comics. Maybe you have a lot of life struggles that you want to relate to others, and you start a daily comic. 
This is a good way to show experiences, bad or good, that you want to either make aware to the public or just have people have something to relate to and feel better with. On a lighter note, maybe you just want to tell a story through picture books like you experienced with your parents, so you get into illustrative drawing. Maybe you want to remember your grandfather, so you get into portrait painting after drawing a gift for your mother. Who knows? There's a million reasons why people get into drawing and art, and why that is usually affects what they draw and how they draw it. If you're into the emo scene, you're probably going to draw darker art. If you're into pop music, you're probably going to draw more colorful art. An example for this is, I have a lot of good memories through children's books. There are so many illustrations that I loved as a kid, and looking back at them gives me this warm feeling. So, of course, right now, I want to become a children's book illustrator. Of course, there are a lot of other things that affect your art, but these are just the main ones that I've noticed. So now that you are more aware of the things around you and in your life that might be affecting your art, you could even maybe manipulate these things and change the way your art is. If you are sick of making a bunch of sad art, maybe cut out that really toxic person, right? Or you can even embrace those negative experiences to spread awareness. Anyways, I hope this, I don't know, helped you? I just, I was just rambling on. Let's talk about what I was drawing. But before I do that, did you notice the kitty tabs? If you counted them, I'm way behind. Dave and I went skiing on a three day trip and I'm behind three days, which means I'm behind 60 pages. I could have sketched at night when we weren't skiing, but I needed to be a good wife and spend the entire time with Dave and not focus on something else. It's hard catching up. I thought 20 pages was enough, but now I have to add 5 to 10 extra pages every day when I can. But anyways, let's talk about what I'm drawing. Today I am sketching my original characters. My OCs, my babies as I call them. I do want to make a video in the future talking about these three later on when I can do a more detailed drawing of them. But for now I thought it would be fun to do some character turnarounds. If you don't know what a character turnaround is, it's basically your character spinning around so that you can see the details of your, your character. It's something that I've never done for these characters, so I thought it would be really fun to put into this sketchbook. So I did it! The first character that I was sketching was Hatch, which you might recognize from the How Small Can I Draw video. It's a bunny lemur character, and it's based off of a stuffed animal, so that's why there's stitches on it. The second is Dennis the Pandalope, which you might recognize from the 10 minute, 1 minute, 10 second challenge. And Alina is the third character, which you might recognize from the left hand challenge. She's the character I struggle the most to draw. I'm not sure if it's because of her design or if it's because I just don't draw her as much. But I love these characters and to be honest, I rarely draw them, so I've been drawing them a lot in this sketchbook. This is the perfect time for me to draw them and go crazy with it, so that's what I've been doing. So you'll be seeing a lot more of them when I do the sketchbook tour. Okay, I think I have talked on enough, so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!